Hidden pain, hidden tears. Had to keep them locked away. I just shed so many tears. Heed my heart, save my soul. I bury my heart anew. They've been working on my soul. But I'm so blessed. Leave it up to God so right now I just worry less. Yeah. Heal my heart, save my soul. Your name and where you're from? Joseph Rochester, uh, mostly known by as Joey Rochester, uh, born in Longwood, Florida, uh, raised in Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, been here my whole life. So did you grow up with your mom and your dad? Uh, yes, up until around about, I was about like eight, ten years old. Um, you know, they got divorced. Uh, my father recently, not too recently, but around near the end of my high school career, moved to Texas. Um, and then my mother stayed here, and then now she's in Brook, back in Brooklyn. And father's in Texas, like, like I said, and I'm here with a few more family members. I'm by myself, but here with a few more family members. So what kind of kid were you in high school? I, a lot of people knew me. Um, I was... Honestly, like I wasn't like, I wasn't the Mr. Popular, but everyone knew me. Like I can, I can just walk up and talk to, you know, just always just walk up anywhere, and talk to someone. Like, hey, cool, you know, keep it moving. Or next group of people, same thing, same. Uh, each class, same thing. Or on out playing outside, same thing. I was just everyone always knew me. I always knew people. Always had like connections. What did you do after high school? After high school, I really didn't, I'm not going to lie, I really didn't do much. I didn't have the mindset that I have now. I was just uh, playing just local soccer, Sunday pickup league. Uh, wasn't, uh, I was working a lot, but wasn't, uh, like I said, I didn't have the mindset. So I was just, I was settled for like a low standard back then. So when did you start playing soccer? I actually, I started playing when... It was in this charter school we went to around the, the neighborhood. Uh, it's called um, Kissimmee Charter Academy. That's where I met actually a lot of uh, g uh, great people that are close friends with me uh, still to this day. Um, I was 10, 11. Yeah, 10, 11, just playing school grounds. Um, like I said, I, I, was, I was transitioning from basketball and football, so my touch was really bad, so I looked pretty funny. I literally remember my first tryout for club. I was tripping over my own feet, uh, over my laces. It was pretty embarrassing, but now looking back, it's hilarious. We all talk about it, but it's uh, it, it's, it's just good to, to look back, uh, see how you started. So what impact soccer had in your life growing up? Really, that was just my key happiness, my, my pain relaxer, my pain easier, put it that way. It's uh. Like if I was mad or just upset, it was either um just go for a run, work out, or play soccer. The majority of times, just end up to soccer. Or even if it's uh if I had like nothing else to do, it just really like um like it's really unfortunate or something. Like I just like I I rather go play soccer than to go play than go go to like uh the biggest party of the year. Like I never went to like any like high school parties, not even like prom or anything. Like I was just always in soccer. So. Most people who play soccer are like team players. For someone who, who seems to just like keep themselves away from everyone else, like it's. I mean, I mean, you obviously got to be a team player. But me, like I feel, I, I don't that team player. Me, I notice especially right now the team that I'm on doesn't come. Nothing. Not saying anything bad about Atletico. Like that's that's my team. Die hard, bleed, blue and yellow. Um, it's just like I have to. Not just like, you know, when you first come to a team or your job, everyone says family and all that, like it's nice. You know, the presentation, they want it to look nice. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just like, 
I don't just, I don't want it, I'm not just looking for it to be nice, like, I want to see, like, is the real fan, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to, going to like, I, I just don't feel, coming from, like, where I came from, I just can't always, like, open up freely, just right, right then and from the bat and just uh, become the family like everyone else, you know what I'm saying? I gotta go through certain phases, you know, see, see how people react to, and they don't get their way, things like that. Not purposely, just, like, piss them off, but, you know, just, you know, getting to know people, basically. Did you play in the college level? No, I actually did not. I didn't play right at the high school. A little situation happened. Um, what exactly happened? We didn't, my, my family and I, we didn't, um, certain memories, we didn't always have eye to eye. And at the same time, it was not going to lie. It was mostly me, because like I said, I didn't have the mindset I have now. I was pretty immature and also I, was, I, was, uh, I still had a hot head. I was, I had anger, grew up with anger problems for certain things that went on and um it uh it grew and so like it, I left I got kicked out of my mom's it's my dad's for a hot minute and it was just awkward because at the time like um that's when my parents uh, divorced before he went to move to Texas so that was my junior about yeah junior in high school and it was it was really awkward I've seen him since like I was like eight ten years old and we, we didn't we didn't it didn't work out then I moved back to my mom's and at the time, like I had a like a tour, like a, you know how like almost like in college, like a, like you go to like campus to give you like a tour, or if it's like out of state, wherever you give like a three day tour or whatever, something like that. Like I had that. Uh, it was like a college week in the in high school. And they uh, and um, everyone like you know all the colleges come giving information, brochures, blah blah blah, et cetera, et cetera. And long story short, like um, it was it was Monroe in uh, New Rochelle. I don't know if you guys have ever been. Um, guy was there, talked to me. I guess he already got all the soccer uh, info from the co uh, head coach at the time, Craig. And he was like, oh, just yeah, just uh, come through. And he was down to give me a full-ride scholarship as long as I still like the school and everything. And uh, long story short, like I told my father about it, and he, for, I don't know, I'm not going to lie, he still to this day haven't got heard the answer, which is the main reason why him and I still, we agreed to have like combo before I leave. Um, like he canceled everything. Like once I left, he just and they told me that I never he I never I, I found out that when literally after um, when I moved back to my mom, the weekend it was fr a Friday. I think I was supposed to leave Saturday or Sunday. I was supposed to fly out or however get down there. However, and it um at that I went to the to the principal because I, I was reading an email in class and then the teacher found out about it because you know we weren't supposed to like we were on the can use a computer so like you can do the schoolwork, but you know everyone's still doing other stuff. So she called. Oh, it's really nice. You know, it's a good opportunity. I shared to the principal, and principal he was down to literally get um give me a like pay for the uh, travel plans and all that. Blah blah blah. So I mean, there's a real nice, uh, real good guy. Then yeah, like I said, he said uh, I went back to the principal. He said, oh yeah, I'm gonna get back and like cancel everything. He said it wasn't gonna be able to go. I was just like, like shit. And that's when like you know the downfall came. Like I just. I just really didn't want to uh, do anything just but, to, but play soccer and then just not really work that much and all. But then once you like, you know, you do that stuff and when you have certain good people in your in your life, the people like, you know, the ones going to be in your ass, even though they, they he's going to think it's like annoying, mainly my mother and my brother. They just, you know, they, they, they made me walk to realize, you know, I got to walk my own path and, you know, go that door myself and that's when I just like, yo, let me get off my ass and, you know, do do what I want to be, chase my dreams, get to at least try, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't give up because the second you give up or just slack, say I'm consistent, that's when everything is just going to be a lot harder or you, you might just miss your opportunity. Why do you think your father did that? That's a good question. I'm literally a good question. I still have an, uh I wanted to ask him, I could have asked him long time, like still to this day, but I'd rather have that face-to-face -face convo. I honestly, I feel like it was just out of anger, but... I anger towards, towards whom? Towards, I mean, there's only two people, it's either myself or my mother, but it would have to be at least more to my mother, because like I said, we were Tony in my life until, well, my eighth grade, until I was, not eighth grade, until I was like eight, ten years old, and he was just, like I said, he was, he was gone. So do you think he did that because he thought he was doing the right decision or you think he just did that because 
you know, it was payback. I'm not gonna lie, like, I don't know. I feel like it was out of anger because everyone is still say, everyone says I'm like my father, you know, it's still your, like, your first son, they're, they're, they're gonna say, oh, you're, you're, you're your father's son or your first daughter's, like, oh, that's your, you're your mother's ta- oh, daughter's, things like that. So it's like, and that that's that's the biggest problem I had, like, controlling my actions out of anger. So I feel like that's, he just did that out of, out of anger. It's, I feel like he he's ready to explain now because he always told me if I want to ask to have something to ask him like a question and then have that talk. But that was that was before he left and it was just at the time I was like I really didn't care because it was just whatever. But now mm-hmm. it's like if we want to have that talk then we can like do it like the first prince I ever compares it to like let's have to go have that talk. You think your anger issues that you explained is because of the lack of him being in your life? I feel like yes. Um, And just also other things growing up as a kid. Um, Other things like what? Like uh, a family member who grew up with epilepsy as a kid. And she was like, she was my first best friend. It was my sister, my mid-sister once in uh, Brooklyn, my uh, my mother right now. not gonna lie, when that happened, like it was like, you know, as a kid, like it was kind of like, it's kind of, it was pretty awkward and just seeing her like, you know, off the, the medication they were giving her wasn't working, seeing that act all weird and funny, like it's not funny, but it's just, you know, her seeing him like, like them, then at the same time, it's, I don't know, like my, I, I treated her badly at times, like I could like, I don't know, she, she would say like she's not feeling good or, or something like that, like I was just, like always just, just uh, just faking it, things like that. Like it was, it was bad. A lot of things I regret, but yeah, things like that. Like it's like you know those small things when I was a kid. Like oh jealousy, oh, oh uh, probably like uh, um, uh, like I said, my sister had epilepsy, so obviously she had to have a little bit more attention growing up. Like you know I, I was uh, um, probably had the late least amount of attention, so that was probably why. And plus on top of that, like the anger issues, um, that that like built up. I was always like fighting and getting in arguments, fights in school. I literally, like, I literally almost got expelled in kindergarten, like, for real, I'm not, I'm not lying, like, it was, it was uh, this kid, and, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like, the teacher, Ms. Uh, Ms. Baez, uh, we're cool to this day, like, her son and I were mad cool, I, like, I was her worst headache, but I'm one of her favorite students, um, there was this kid, back then, you know, the kids, we had a little, back in the time, we had the desk, you know, we used the uh, shaving cream, cream the desk, yeah, we're doing that, we did that, you know, set up a little pencil box, crayon box, all the crayons in there, guy like he took my my green crown the green's my favorite color you don't want to get back i was like all right and i was a little badass at the time uh anger problems i was like all right got my scissors ease it in pencil sharpener do it at him a little give him a little cut stab him a bit and then that's how i almost got spelled this is dumb shit but it's like you know a kid took my crown like, come on now. <laughs> how have your anger issues stopped you from like making critical decisions in your life by not being able to play soccer and you can ask my team, anyone on the team, from the coach to the players, assistants. There is, uh, because like, you know, once you, it's just, let's say, in a, let's say I foul someone. I don't think it's, a, oh, I get called as a foul, like I foul someone. Um, it doesn't have to be soccer, any sport. Like, but especially when you're like really into the game, like, you know, trying to win, especially the last few minutes, you know, trying to score, not get up. Like, oh, it's like, oh that's a foul, bro. Like, ain't no damn foul. Like, come on now, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, most of the times, like, I'm, I'm a little like I'm really like I'm not like free, I'm not like you know like huge but I'm I'm pretty majority of the time I'm a lot stronger than more majority of guys on the field so if a guy touches me like I'm and we cly like I, I like I'm putting less effort so I, uh, at times I'm not gonna lie like I'm not always fouling so I always feel like it's uh it's just a diff uh different advantage like muscle advantage but like I can't um I would, I I, I got to get out of the argument the argument mindset like let's say you say something to me you're like oh i don't like your i don't like how you act or you know you piss me off or i don't like you like you know other people are like whoa 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 yo like screw you or you're looking at someone like you know staring at them for like five seconds you're like oh or like are you gonna you decide like you gotta you're gonna talk back or you're gonna just walk away accept that whatever happened like like in soccer like are you gonna talk back to ref or just take the red card if you keep talking about the ref, you're gonna get another. He can he can give you red card easy, but he'll just go sit out the rest of the game. 
I was saying, if he's being nice, he gives tell you to go sit out the rest of the game and not give a red card. And going through, like I said, with the anger problems that I had to that I had to um, had to work on that a lot because I was always flipping out at times, like when it, when the games got real heated, especially most important games, and I always got a red card. Everyone's like, "Oh, Joey, Joey, Joey gets heated. Like you probably got to take him out, or he's gonna get carded." And it was true. Because you know, have you happened. taken have you taken the time to like speak with a therapist? No, I everyone's uh, I got the I got told to uh, speak with one. Uh, man, it was just my friend from uh, back from uh, the charter school. Uh, we also went to high school gateway. Her name's Yara. She, was, she always told me like I should go see a therapist more, or, or like I should have like a uh, people say I should have like a little group session, like uh, like like you know like a breakfast club type thing. But I don't know. I got I, I've been told that uh, uh, starting to get to, uh, told that a lot though. What are your thoughts on the therapist? I mean, yeah, the people don't have a clear, a clear, uh, clear mindset. Like, I mean, it doesn't have to be a therapist. Go to someone, go to someone you trust, someone you know is gonna going to just uh, give you be flat out, just straight honest with you. Uh, normally, I'll say I'll aim for going for the old heads, like going to like a grandpa, or grandma, or there's a grandpa. Like if it, and it, like not just any grandpa, grandma. Like go to someone. Um, or does it go to someone that has a lot of kids? Go to someone that uh, you know, um, that you know, like works a lot. Someone that actually, you know, what I'm saying that actually is like constantly on the move. Not someone that's that's just chilling. You know, what I'm saying like, but I will always try to go to someone, uh, someone older, definitely. You mentioned most of the time in, in in every important game, you know, you will probably get a red card. Do you think like? you know that's the best move for the team you know like when 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 it's getting really tough to like take you out of the game no definitely not most of them majority of them they uh they hated me for for not hate me well they probably hated me a lot at the point um but yeah most most uh a lot of important games i especially like semifinals knockout stage and all that they lose my head and uh that's um uh, it's that that's just goes back to just simply like maturing as a person. You don't have to really be an athlete or anyone big or anything. It's just as part of life. Um, but uh, yeah, that 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 really was a big thing, especially especially those big games. I did myself for that. It's just, like you can even if some of them, I don't know if you can go back or anyone go back see some of the court in the second I got red carded or got sent off or like. I got it. Like it was like yo, it's a waste of time. Like oh, I already knew. Like why did, why did even that happen? And I mean, like I feel like I, I'm, I was, it, it was, it was annoying to see it now, but at the same time, like I'm glad it did happen because it's like it needed to happen. It's like it's you know, it's like that tough love thing that always has to happen. So when was the last time you you got red carded? Last time I got red carded, and that's a good question. Actually, it would have to be when I broke my when I broke this. This arm and this these knuckles. Uh, I was the ref, uh, not the ref, the keeper. And I were going at it throughout. It was just, it was just one of those, it's good, those uh, good games. Like it's it's a good game, you know, just going back and back, mouth and off. Nothing's really happening, but <clears throat> uh, the keeper's going off. Um, he got sent off. Um, I was already on the yellow. Then he was just mouthing off to me, and I was still like, you know, in my head like, all right, I like I let it go for a little bit. And then he said. Well, what he said, and I started mouthing off, and then he wanted to come on field, and he came on field to slap me, and then I like, I, I like, I, I shoved him, like you know, I was going towards him, and I didn't hit him, but like, uh, yeah, I got carded, and then I was like real, I was really aggravated because I wanted to hit him, everyone pushed me away, I couldn't hit him, and like you know those, um, you know those, uh, like the the light poles on the field, like some have concrete around, like there was one like right there around me, and I literally just, I just hit it like as hard as I could. And I felt, I'm not gonna lie, I felt nothing, absolutely nothing until about an hour after. Like, I have a video I can show y'all later. Like, the instantly just these knuckles came back. And this, it was just like right here, just hanging. And then you see me in the, uh, like, as soon as I get in the car, uh, he starts mouthing off again. Like, I, like, we look, like, we, I was going towards him, but like, nothing happened. But anyway, as long as short, like, it gets to the hospital about an hour away from 30 minutes from the hospital, and that's when I felt all the pain and all that. And it was just stupid. Like, honestly, when you think about it, it's just stupid. Like, it's just dumb. Have you displayed this anger off the field as an adult? It's, 
I mean, it's at the same time it's pain, but at the same time it's it's still life. Like you still gotta mature through it. Like there's, I mean, it's not. I mean, what I've been through, yeah, it does hurt. But there's also millions of people who've been through like things ten times worth as me. Like it's just to them that's just mentality. So, like I said, it's still maturing. Tell me about your current position now in the team. You know, like what you got going on for, in terms of in terms of soccer. For right now, I am all, and currently going to be going in um, September. Going to be going to Costa Rica for three months for training. Uh, should be getting a, hopefully should be getting a contract as as uh, not I'm not promised, but as long as I put put in certain effort and work in, I should I should be getting something hopefully. Uh, for the team Atletico, I'm on the second team. Uh, we are in the first division for UPSL, but pretty sure I was um, I'm going to be for certain games as long as I keep developing and stay consistent you know show the hunger um, I'll play um, play a few games for the first team before I leave I already took my picture and stuff but I don't want to act like it's promised like you know it's you know what I'm saying I still want to keep the hunger and like work to work towards it but yeah when I I definitely want to go and play professional in Europe that's been my dream since I took soccer serious um, when I was about 12 13 um, actually, when I was about 12, 13, I was playing with 16-year-olds. Um, I'm not going to lie, like, it was uh, back then, like, you can only play at your own age group. So if I was, like, if I was 11, I had to play with 11-year-olds. But I lied, and I was like, made me step it up a bit and put it down, then actually was able to stay. But, um, yeah, the, for Atletico, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I, I love the wing more, but I'm not going to lie, I do feel like I'm better as a forward at times. Cause I would, normally I'll just say I feel like I, I don't like playing for it unless I'm like real pissed off or not just really like zoned into the game. And if I'm like really, I'm starting to see like if I'm really zoned into the game, which you should always be, then I feel like then that's part of my best position. I just, I just like playing wings. I like to dribble more. So do you think the soccer culture here in America gives the opportunity to, to soccer players like it is in Europe? I mean, it's building up. I mean, it's. I mean, it's uh, opportunities are definitely out there, but it's in Europe. It's just more of a higher level. I mean, they, they're USA. They're they're getting here in America. They're the training, coaching is getting is improving. Like, I mean, literally, look look how we are now. Where like ten years ago, back when it was like MLS was really just what LA Galaxy. You know, that's all I ever heard about MLS and Landon Donovan, but. Like it grew, it grew a lot major. So just, just needs to keep coming. Everyone just keep connecting, um, be willing to work, get better, and just stay improving, all all aspects. Tell me about the the team in in, in Costa Rica. How did you get that link? Soccer, um, soccer visa. Uh, we, Joe, we went. We because we were we were in contact on social media for uh, for a little bit before we actually met in person. Uh, it was in Bradenton. I, it was a three day combine and I, I didn't get anything. I didn't. It, it was a better experience for me. Um, it was back when I still thought I was better than I wasn't as good as I thought it was. But like I said, it was. I got uh, I got information, things I can uh, improve on, what to look for, and just some um, knowledge like uh, even in classroom like about um, the scouts and what coaches look for. And, uh, it was it was just a real great experience. But Joe and and. Um, uh, and soccer breeds over there in Costa Rica. They, it's it's like, it's it's a big like a big academy. It's a profess. They have their own professional team now as well, and they're building the field, or unless it's already started be, uh, being built. Yeah, they're they just take uh they start getting as many players as they can like hungry players. You're trying to pro- well, they are promoting the most hungriest players. Let's say uh someone people who don't who don't get um like the right coaching. Cause I'm not gonna lie, some teams I play down here like in leagues. Like yeah, you're playing in a in certain league, but it's like, in the, in the in the in these leagues, like people they still just they never practice. They just show up to uh show up to the games, or even if they, like even if there's a game, like you have like, you have like, fifty forty people on the roster, and half of them like only ten is only minimum twenty people showing up to the same practice. Um, about like fifteen people show up to a game. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you still have all these people, and it's just I see like favoritism. Um, then it's, it's just, it, 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 like, like I said, the opportunity is there, but it's, 
people the this it goes down to like certain people i feel like not the right people in the in the right power position and at the same time like there's favoritism and then there's lazy athletes and then so that uh joe not just him he's not the only one that's that's a uh, big company but from him the talks him and i had like he like i'm not gonna lie he knows he knows me as a player better than a lot of coaches i had probably still to this day most likely so and he knows, like, uh, he comes from a similar background to me. So and he told me since uh, we met, like, yo, you need to come over here ASAP. As soon as you can come. Uh, that's what I did. I got finances this year. And I'm paying basically everything I get to I make to, to go over there. And just finally, you know, get things done and sign a contract. So tell me your expectations of yourself when you get there. Like, what do you think is going gonna, is gonna to happen when you get out there? I'm expecting... I don't, like I I feel like everyone should expect me to say like be a leader, but because like I'm 27, I'm gonna be 28. I know I look very young, so you know they're gonna like regardless of what I want to uh, or not, like their coach is gonna expect me to like be on the field as a leader. Like I'm not gonna lie, I don't like being a, I don't look as myself as a leader, and like I even I like, come to work, I don't like training people, but when I actually do it, like I feel like okay, well I'm actually. Like pretty good because like I'm not gonna lie I'm not being cocky because like, I do stand out in like certain areas like I know I can either work hard or uh, work harder than some people do something a little bit more efficient or faster so I feel like that's um that's probably why but it's uh I, I just it's just me it's just simple like find figure out like what you want to do figure out everything you need to do what it takes and go get it and don't let it get in the way that's that's just basically it for me. So, what are the biggest challenges you faced along the way, you know, to get to this point? Well, one first one was controlling my anger. Well, well, I have control a lot, but continuously controlling it. Finances. I was um, I was homeless for a hot minute. Um, I was doing some things, illegal things that I re- highly regret, and it's just. Just that mindset that I had back then, it was just very negative and very, not lazy, like I was still getting things done. It was, it's like I just, there's certain things I could have done a lot better back then that probably would have been a lot easier for me to uh, still to this day. So how did you become homeless? A certain situation, family situation happened and it was like a little emergency. Family had to um, go back up, up north um, still to this day. And it was just my sister and I, and I guess it was back to when to doing things that should have uh, things well, like not what? things not. I don't want to say really, like well illegally, illegally, whatever should have done. But in my eyes, like you gotta do what you gotta do. So when you actually people that come from certain situations, like and actually, you know, it's either like you're gonna eat or you're gonna not. Like you're gonna eat or you're gonna starve, or you know what I'm saying. Like it's same things like that. When you actually go through, you'll understand. But um, not saying it's good or bad, but it's just, it's just you can do what you got to do. Um, but like I said, uh, I, it, I, yeah, I took, I was taking care of my sister for a bit. And when I was in that situation, it was like, all right, well, like, um, <clears throat> I don't want my family to, you know, be in this situation. You know what I'm saying like, yeah, like we are, like we're, we're stuck in this situation, but like, it's just like, if anything happens, like I, like I'm gonna feel like it's my fault. Like if like she, my sister doesn't need to be here. So flew her over, and it was just me and took care. Of, like you know, got out of there finally. Took care of need to take care of, and still helping. Uh, still with some, working two jobs while there. I was still playing soccer. Still staying in shape. Still helping being healthy. It's not like I love being there. I was just did what I did. Had to do and. When I was able to leave and left just like that, you know what I'm saying? What do you think the biggest cause of 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 homelessness is? It's finance. It's being just caught in un unfortunate and just fucked up situations. Like, like I said, like back in um back back when um um my my parents got divorced. Like that was a big finance drop for my mom, and she still she was still um being notary and, and um she still had a good job as well but you know what i'm saying like that instant change that 
that changed a lot and that that uh, that's going to change your mindset like anyone goes through that they're going to change whether you like it or not um, and depending on how how good you're going to support that person that's just going to that's going to depend on how deeper or better or worse they're going to get so because yeah that's yeah, it was, it, was, it was just hard. It was a lot, but... Did you plan on calling for, like, help from, like, your father at all going through? I did uh, a few times, but at the same time, um, I, I just felt like I always had to, still to say, I always had to prove, like, prove people wrong. Like, it's... Like, it, it, I mean, like, I... Like, yeah, I was in a tough situation, but, I like, I still had a whole lot of potential to, to play soccer. Like, I still... Like I was, I was still getting um, um, a lot of offers to not offers. Well, like people saying, "Hey, come, come try out for this team. Um, but uh, come, come do this or go to good work." Or people saying like, "Oh, because I was always post well, like workouts." And then people like, "Oh, insp- you inspire me. Uh, change, uh, change lifestyle stuff like that." So that just went back to like kicking back into uh, like the soccer being like the thing to you know. That's my, that's, that just lifted me. Like, it got me off my ass. And it's like, yo, like, you can still do this. You know what I'm saying? People, like, I, I saw, like, soccer Reese, I seen this guy. Um, he just got signed a contract as well. He just turned 28. I'm turning 28 when I go over there. Like, I can be the same thing. And the coach kept telling me, yo, if you stay consistent where you are, like, just a month, that's all you need. That's why I go back to saying, like, I don't want to be like, oh, I got a month. Just go there, chill. Like, oh, I can just stay here for a month. You know what I'm saying? Like a little hothead. And then be a dumbass. Come back. Oh, this twenty-eight-year-old thought he was a little hot air. He's gonna just slide right in. Things like that. But yeah, it's just that. Uh, then it's it's just very those unfortunate moments. It's it's like saying like what um, I say you just bought a house, right? Um, and you just got a loan from a bank, or something happens with that bank, or I don't know. Is it say you just had some fraud on your bank account, and you're about to lose everything, and go homeless? Like, like what are you gonna do now? I was saying it's like oh and you you don't have money to you don't really legitimately don't have money uh, maybe you gotta work wait for your next paycheck but then you get your paycheck but it's not like you can save because literally you have to spend like everything that's that you gotta spend that whole dollar if you don't spend it that same hour you're gonna spend it um, that check's gonna be gone the next day or next week you know what I'm saying so that's still that's paycheck to paycheck right there so that's gonna uh, when that starts that's it's like uh like all right you got a car like my situation um see um i was home and so yeah i had a car but then you also had to pay for your hotel room the cheap uh, like hotels over here like paying for hotels like literally paying rent for for house so like i was paying 60 a day 60 dollars a day added up to um to uh to um a, a week she gave me a special was three three hundred fifty it's 350 a week if we add that up, that's twelve twelve hundred a month. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's more than what people are paying for rent. That's more than what I'm paying right now for this thing room. So and that's like a down payment for a car. So you get stuff stuck in a situation like that. <clears throat> that is when when people start not saying it's a good thing, but that's when like people are really hungry, real desperate. They're like, "Yo, we really need money," because it's like. I mean, I'm paying like double amount in a hotel than with for a house or anything. So if I need to, you need to get out of this situation, you have to like double up on something. You gotta work a little bit more extra, but you can't kill yourself because even even jobs are not gonna let you kill yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's why there's overtime. Um, and then that's when people like they go doing selling weed or something, and then they come out of that, and then they that's when you see them they come up, and then people that are like hating on them or whatever, try and like show them when they're on the ash, trying to make them look like they're like they're a bad person, whatever, like the crazy, and then it just goes back to like being, uh, well, if like whatever, fuck it, I'd rather be guilty, uh, rich and guilty, I'd rather be rich and guilty than rather than be poor and innocent. And then that's when you can, because when you're poor and innocent, anyone can just, anyone can just shit on you. Like you can, like you can just, I don't know, like something happened, or you're just living, like I said, you're just living a daily life, something happened, um, let's say manager's being asked, you fire you. Then that's just goes back to living the same uh, ladder that I just talked about. Like you can go homeless, or like either way, you, you get a sword or something. Like you're gonna lose something, lose something that's gonna add on to like a billions other things. Then when that adds on to you, then that person that all that's added on to you, the mentality is changing. 
And if your mentality is changing, the people around you is going to change. So what advice would you give, you, give to an 18-year-old version of yourself? 18-year-old version of myself? <laughs> Stop chilling with, don't chill with all the people you're chilling with at that time. Um, listen to your mom. Um, now I know why my mom didn't want me to job until at least out of high school. Um, just because certain areas we were living in and people I was, she saw I was cool with, but I didn't, not, not, nothing bad on them because, but, um, sticking to the subject, uh, it's, um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a big, uh, that was just the biggest stage of my life right there just coming up. What should we expect from you and um, where can we um, follow you along your journey? We definitely expect me to achieve everything I'm talking about. It's literally like I said, I'm 27 and finally, like there's this, like I made a lot of sacrifice. Like I'm not gonna lie, there's, there's more to it than everything that's been just said on this video. Like we will have to be rolling like all, literally all day to talk about everything. Um, just know I will be getting my contract. I will be playing professional, either in South America or Europe. Um, uh, I, I I will achieve all my goals, and and I just know I will be I, I will be great. Like I like someone that's it doesn't have to be like like a any athlete, but when you have the mama mentality, you're you're going to be great. Not because just because you want to, but because you have to. Like you you will be great. Like. That that, this, that that mama mentality goes a long way. It's not just words. It has has millions and millions of of meanings to that. And only only ones I've been through or I'm going through it already. Though that those are the only ones I understand. Like only strong survive, man. For real. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank thank you guys. Like this, I'm not gonna. I was nervous. Nervous, but this is this is great. Like you know, just getting out there. You know, I feel like uh, getting a. Uh, as I get more and closer and closer to this uh, contract, it's just not contract, but offer finally live this, uh, live this uh, dream. It's just like I'm feeling like all these right people are just coming in place spiritually. And so you guys are great, honestly. I mean, definitely look to doing, look forward to doing some more work with you guys for real. Alrighty, man.